You're having some, are you? That's the idea. It's part of our British way of life, isn't it? You know, I bet you there isn't a family in this country hasn't had something to do with beer at some time or other. Either growing the stuff that goes into it, or brewing it, selling it, or drinking it. And at the same time, a lot of people don't know how this lovely stuff is made. Well, I do. Yes, I've got relatives in the trade. I've got a cousin who works in the maltings. That's where it all begins, really. He gets a load of these hops. Well, no, not hops, barley. And what we do here is to steep it. You see, that's just uh, soaking it in water. And then we spread it out on the malting floor. And then from time to time we turn it. That's why we have these, uh, these wooden turners. And then after a bit, the grain starts to germinate. Then they apply heat to the barley, you see, to speed up the germinating process and make it sprout all the quicker. Oh, no, 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 no. What the heat does is to stop germination and give it that special flavor. Mind you, You've got to catch it just the right moment and get it to just the right temperature for the correct length of time. If you do all that properly, and the grain will turn to malt, you'll have malted barley. Well, there you are, see, that's how they do it. Well, they must next, let's see. Oh, yes, hops. They're a bit like a runner bean with a left-hand thread. What happens is this. The alcohol is extracted to strengthen the beer. Over there is where my cousin works, and what he doesn't know about hops. The hop or cumulus lupulus is in fact a relative of the stinging nettle and has no connection whatever with the runner bean as some ignorant people seem to think. And it contributes not to the alcoholic strength of the beer but to its flavour, giving us that bitter, tangy taste we all enjoy. Couldn't have put it better myself. The bitter, tangy taste of hops. And how did they get that taste? By scorching the leaves of the plants. Great care must be taken not to scorch the plants. The cone, or ripe fruit, is, is the part we use, and this must be thoroughly dried, and we use hot air, actually, but you've got to avoid excessive heat, otherwise you may destroy that part of the hop which gives us our flavour. Now, the dried hops are then packed into big sacks they call pockets, and after that, they send the pockets they've packed full of the hops they've picked. Here! Now this is a brewery, right? And this particular one is rather special because it's one of the few remaining breweries where beer is still made on a small scale, last of its kind. Oh, hello, I'm the lad's uncle there, uh, and he's a bit wide of the mark, I'm afraid. Uh, this brewery is old, true enough. About a hundred years, in fact. But it's hardly the last of its kind. Oh, there must be, oh, 70 or 80 breweries like this up and down the country. And all doing very well, I might tell you. Uncle! I'm in here, lad! Oh. Excuse me a minute, will you? I'm just going to sample the work. Yeah, did, you, did you say work? Yes, well, I know all about work. Yes, it's right. You carry on, Uncle. I'll tell them what's happening. It's uh, very simple, really. You see, inside this mash tun, this is a mash tun, right? Yeah. Well, inside here, they're fermenting the work. Uh, we're sparging the grist, as a matter of fact. Sparging the grist. Uh, grist is crushed malted barley. You see, we mash it with hot water and then hold it at a high temperature to extract the goodness. And then finally we sparge it, uh, spray it with hot water. Sparging the grist. And then out comes the wort. Uh, W-O-R-T, wort. Right? Right. Right, that's what I was going to say. W-O-R-T, wort. I was. That's a mash tun thermometer. I bet he didn't know I knew that. <laughs> Did you, Uncle? Uncle? Where's he got to? Uncle! <whistles> Uncle, where are you? I'm down here, lad, by the copper. Mind your head. Now he tells me. What did he say, by the copper? That's it. That's what happens. 
They fermented in the copper down there. Uh, no, no. This isn't where we do the fermenting, no, this is where the hops come in. Now, the wort has been strained off from the mash tuns into this copper, right? Well, we boil up the wort with the hops to extract their flavour. Right, Jack? Right. right. And then, uh, once again, the hot wort is strained off, cooled and conveyed to the fermenting vessels where fermentation takes place. We bring this about by adding yeast, you see. Now, the yeast goes to work on the sugar from the malt and breaks it down and turns it into alcohol and also gives it some of its life and sparkle. Oh, lovely! <laughs> yes, it is an entirely natural process and all we do really is to provide the conditions. Now, while it's going on, the yeast grows and multiplies itself. So you end up having more yeast than you started with. That's right, lad. Yeah. Every brew multiplies its yeast about five times. Yeah. Isn't that marvellous? Sort of a do-it-yourself yeast factory. Yes, well, we've uh, skimmed off the yeast from the fermenting vessel, right? And we've dried it in this here press. There we are. Yes. Stop. Thank you, Steve. Now, some of it is used again for more brewing. And the surplus yeast... Oh, no, I oh, know. Don't tell me, please. Don't tell me. It goes into those little bottles we get at the chemists. Good lad. Well, that's it, then. That's the end of the process. They've brewed the beer. All they've got to do now is get it down the pub. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not the end of the process at all, you see. The beer has got to be... Uh, the beer has got to be conditioned. This means storing it while it matures. This allows the sediment to settle to the bottom, leaving it bright and clear. Then they put it in wooden barrels. Wood or metal casks. We use both, actually. A lot of breweries these days do use nothing but metal casks, but metal or wood, the beer's just the same. Anyway, there it goes. I wonder how many whistles that lot's going to wet. Of course, in a place like this, they do it on a comparatively small scale, but when you think that every year we must drink tens of thousands of pints of the lovely stuff... <laughs> millions, lad! Ten thousand millions! Anyway, it's an awful lot of beer. Couldn't possibly cope in all those little breweries. It's got to be done on a big scale. Take barley, for instance. We grow a fair bit of barley here in Hampshire. They grow quite a bit in East Anglia as well. About two million acres in the country as a whole. A third of the crop is malted for the breweries. British barley for British beer, lad. Yeah, we virtually grow the lot. <laughs> yes, barley's on a big scale today. And that means mechanisation. On the farm and at the maltings as well. So, malt is what it's always been, thank goodness. Like the hop. The only thing that's changed is the way they pick them. It's all mechanised now. But, mechanical methods or not, We've still got the same good old wholesome ingredients and 10,000 million pints of beer to brew. How are we going to do it? Stands to reason. We need some very large, very modern, very streamlined breweries like this one. Oh, incidentally, you won't be too surprised to find that I've got a distant relative working here, will you? Ah, now this is the central control panel. Hello! <laughs> you all right then? Yeah, there he is, Tim. That's him. Lovely bloke he is. He's got it all up here, you know. And he, uh, he's quite right when he says that's a central panel, because uh, that's what it is. Yeah, and, and its uh, function is to um, control the... Uh... Well, it's a bit highly technical, actually. You probably wouldn't quite understand it. Yes, well, it's quite simple, really. It automatically monitors all the main brewing processes and allows us to operate the equipment by remote control. Yeah, you see, they do that so they don't have to bother. He's quite wrong about that. 
we bother a great deal. You see, this simply tells us what's happening at each stage so that we can decide what ought to happen next. In fact, we are in control of the panel, and the panel is not in control of us. Uh, take the mash tun. It just happens to be made of stainless steel, automatically drained, and cleaned with superheated steam. It's just about the most efficient mash tun that you can get. It's a mash tun sparge in the grist, that's all. <laughs> Yeah, what's this fella up to? Oh, he's bothering. I told you, we bother all the time. Yes, we take samples at every stage of the process and subject them to every kind of test. For strength, flavour, colour, keeping qualities, you name it, we test it. We test the ingredients too. The malt, the hops, even the water, which we in the brewing trade call liquor for some extraordinary reason. Now, we never stop bothering to make sure that the beer is just as good as we can make it. Yes, well, they have to bother, you see, because they've done away with so many of the tried and true methods of brewing. I mean, I mean, for instance, you won't see a copper in a brewery like this. Um, you're sitting on one, actually. Now, don't be misled by the fact that, like so many things around here, it's made of stainless steel it's for easier cleaning. It still performs the essential function of a copper. You see, we add the hops. Yeah, we know that, don't we? Yeah, hops. You add the hops to the wort, W-O-R-T, give it a good boil up, and then you get that lovely, bitter, tangy taste. Uh, precisely. And now, if we could move along to the uh, fermenting vessels. This, this way. Thank you. Fermenting vessels? What's he on about? Look, where is all the froth on the surface? And where's all the yeast working and bubbling away then? Uh, inside. The vessels are enclosed so that on this scale we can keep close control. Uh, there's still only one way to make beer, you know. That's to take the wort, ferment it with yeast, just as it's always been done. Well, it proves my point then, doesn't it? You can't beat the old ways of doing things. Oh, incidentally, I expect you're wondering uh, where all this beer's kept until it's ready. Now this is the conditioning room where we keep the beer while it matures. Now each of these tanks holds 17,280 gallons. This means that the total capacity of the conditioning room is 691,200 gallons. Yes, well I... Oh, he's gone, never mind. It just bears out what I've been saying all along. Beer is still brewed with traditional ingredients and traditional skills. It's just that they brew a lot more of it, that's all. Hello? Ta. <laughs> sure you can spare it? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. See, it just goes to show, basically, that is the same good stuff, but it's changing and improving all the time. And who's been responsible for all these changes and improvements, eh? We have. You and me, the man in the pub. We can call for a light ale, or a pint of bitter, or a stout, or a lager. But it's still the barley and hops at the heart of every one of them. Different beers for different people. Yeah, it, it stands to reason that no new beer, no new way of presenting it would last five minutes if we didn't like it. I mean, you know, without our approval, you know, you and me, and our friends and relations. And another thing, we're always after something different, aren't we? I mean, different kinds of beer, different kinds of pubs. Oh, yes, pubs. Marvellous places. Hmm. I love them, don't you? I mean, there's something for everybody, isn't there? You can play games if you want to.
You can sit somewhere quiet if you want to. And on the other hand... But the best thing, the best thing is you can find somewhere to meet your friends. And if you want it, there's plenty of lovely grub. isn't it? I mean, the variety, there's something for everybody. And what have they all got in common? Beer. It's lovely stuff. And what a fascinating subject. Oh, could I have the same again, please, Gov? And you know what? I reckon that knowing a bit about it makes you appreciate it all the more. Yeah, definitely. Oh, meet the governor. It's my dad. Oh, how do you do? Yeah, boy. Have that one on me. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you one thing. I may not know much about beer, but I know what I like. Cheers. Cheerio. Jolly good luck. Cheerio. Good luck. Cheers. Cheerio.